Learn to Talk Around the Clock is an early intervention program developed for children who are deaf and hard of hearing from birth to three years of age. This program was developed by Karen Rossi, who's an early intervention specialist with over 30 years of experience with deaf and hard of hearing children. This program is implemented by the family unit itself, and the SLP acts as a coach that guides the parents um, to facilitate the language development of their child. It's implemented in the natural home environment and utilizes activities from the child's everyday life to allow them access to unlimited language learning opportunities. Learn to Talk Around the Clock has 12 thematic units that are consistent with these daily activities and will be presented on the screen. Within Learn to Talk Around the Clock, there are eight language signature behaviors and eight listening signature behaviors that the parents must acquire throughout the program. These were developed in a hierarchical manner in which one skill builds upon the next. Language signature behaviors are parent-child interactions that enhance the development of listening and talking in young children. The first language signature behavior addresses positioning the child to enhance communication during interactions. This occurs within all 12 thematic units. Next, parents will learn to recognize signals their child uses to indicate wants and needs. Then, parents will assist, demonstrate, and appropriately model language for their child. Parents will be encouraged to name and use short sentences to describe the child's things and actions. The fifth language signature behavior involves parents learning to know when their child understands what is being said. Parents will also be taught to use self-talk to describe their own actions. Similarly, parents will use parallel talk. Lastly, parents will expand their child's utterances to enhance the development of listening and support the eight language signature behaviors mentioned previously. Listening signature behaviors are taught. Initially, parents will demonstrate a knowledge of hearing loss and understand the value of amplification. With this in mind, parents will be instructed to ensure their child's hearing aid or cochlear implant is used at all waking hours within the first six weeks of the fitting. Throughout the period of time, parents will be proactive in maintaining the amplification device and make sure that it is in good working condition. Next, the parents will make every effort to provide the best listening environment. This includes minimizing any distractions that may occur throughout the day. Following this, parents will provide their child with enjoyable and meaningful experiences with sound. Likewise, it's important for the parent to make the child aware of naturally occurring sounds within the environment. For the child's benefit, the parent also needs to label the sounds. Correspondingly, parents should make note of which sounds their child is aware of and how well they are able to discriminate. Finally, parents will associate sounds with meaningful language and concepts. Again, each language and listening signature behavior is targeted throughout each thematic unit. Each level of the thematic unit has a folder for the SLP, which contains the objective for that unit, as well as ways in which to implement the activities. The SLP will meet with the parent and discuss the objectives, as well as explain ways in which to implement these activities in the home with their child. The child can be included in the sessions with the SLP and the parent, and the SLP can recommend ways in which the parent can increase their um, communication effectiveness with their child. It's important to remember that when starting this program, the families can be at different levels, so you need to, the SLP needs to consider each family individually and assess their needs and skill level at that time. And then, depending on the skill level, the SLP can determine which level of the program to begin on. The following video clip will show a demonstration of the interaction between an, a speech language pathologist and the parent in which the SLP is discussing the importance of amplification and the impact of a child's hearing loss. To refresh your memory, this is listening signature behavior one. Hi, Mrs. 
Mrs. Smith. So I know that you recently met with the audiologist um, to discuss your daughter Lauren's hearing results. So what exactly did she tell you? Um, that Lauren has a conductive hearing loss and she went into a bunch of terms, but it kind of all went over my head. I was a little bit in shock. So. Right. No, that's understandable in this type of situation. Well, I'll try my best to explain to you um, what's going on and what we can do. So a conductive hearing loss means that there's a problem in the outer or middle ear and that the, most likely the bones in the middle ear aren't functioning properly, so the sound isn't being transmitted for Lauren to be able to hear. So the audiologist actually sent me the audiogram, and we can review it. Um, so this shows that she has a mild to moderate conductive hearing loss, and it shows that at about 40 hertz, um, she has trouble with the sounds M, and S, and all of the sounds above it. So this means that if she hears background noise or something, these sounds are just going to be hard for her to hear. Um, however, if we were able to give her amplification, this might help. Um, so there are different types of amplification she could use. Um, she could get a hearing aid and the audiologist can discuss with you the different types of hearing aids. Um, but the use of a hearing aid will hopefully bring her up to the normal level where she'd be able to hear. Um, this would be important for her when she's learning speech and language, so it's important that you do consider using the hearing aids. Mm -hmm. um, if you decide to get the hearing aids, it's important that she wears them consistently. Okay. Well, I definitely do think I want to go ahead and get her whatever she needs to help, and I do want to do a program that would help her with her speech and language development because I don't want her to fall behind. Right. It is very important. So we, I've chosen to use the program Learn to Talk Around the Clock. Um, I'll show you how to implement this program with Lauren, and then once you feel comfortable, you will start to use it with her at home. Now you will see a demonstration of a speech-language pathologist explaining to the parent how to implement the first language signature behavior within the thematic unit of mealtime. The purpose of the program Learn to Talk Around the Clock is to help increase um, the child's communication interactions with the parent during different activities that the child is engaging in throughout the day. So it can be mealtime, getting dressed, playtime, bath time, bedtime, all of these different activities. So there's different activities for each part of the day then? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there's a certain thing that I have to do at each time? Right, and each different activity really has like an overarching goal, objective that the parent should do in order to help increase the child's communication. So you and I are going to go over meal time. Um, how is a typical meal time for you and Lauren? Well, typically Lauren is in her high chair. Um, I'm, you know, back and forth in the kitchen trying to get her the things that she needs, certain food she likes. Sometimes she doesn't like what I cook, so I try to figure out something else that she likes. Um, I do get off early on work um, to help take care of her when she gets out of daycare, so I answer emails, have the phone ringing, things like that. It's not the most calm environment, probably, for her to be eating in. Right, and how's the communication usually during mealtime? Well, like I said, I'm usually on the phone or answering emails, things like that, back and forth in between, you know, focusing, trying to focus on her, trying to make dinner, things like that. Um, it could be better, probably. Okay, yeah, I know it's it can be. Limiting, so. Yeah, and that's understandable. I know it can be overwhelming to think of all the things we need to do to help Lauren listen and talk. Meal time gives ways that we can help increase the communication. So one thing it suggests is planning ahead. So if you know that Lauren is going to be coming and sitting down to eat in about 10 to 15 minutes, we can put out her spoon, her fork. We can put out things that we know she's going to be needing to eat. We can turn off the TV, maybe put the dog or cat away, just minimize the distractions, do different things that we know are going to distract her. And the overarching goal of mealtime is to minimize the distractions and we want to put her in a position that is going to be most effective for her communi communication. The position is going to be really important. So what position do you suggest? That really we want her facing you and just maintaining eye contact. You know, if she's looking at you, um, this is just going to be more helpful for her to hear you and just this will increase the overall communication. Okay. And um, 
so that should it isn't just talk to her then while she's yeah just ask her different things maybe how her day was at daycare if she did anything fun that day if she likes your food that's another thing you can do during mealtime if you know there's a food that she does like or doesn't like this could also help spark the conversation if oh Lauren did you like this food or did you not like this food and you know she can tell you different things but Really, the positioning is the most important goal of mealtime because you want her looking at you and this will help her hear you and just maintaining the eye contact. This is just going to help increase her communication. Okay, so right now I'm just focusing on making sure that she's looking at me, facing me, and reducing as much distractible variables as possible. Yes, that's perfect. So I want you to go home and try this out and then you just let me know how you think it went. Okay, all right. Thank you. The thematic units of Learn to Talk Around the Clock highlight daily activities parents can do with their children. This will help the intervention process and make the overall therapy more effective. Since the family plays such an essential role in a child's development, this program allows the parents or caregivers to become active participants in the facilitation of their child's listening and spoken language skills. Overall, we think this is a beneficial and practical program to use for young children who are deaf or hard of hearing.